Okay, we're looking at 9.3 area of trapezoids, and it looks like it starts on page 685. So go ahead and turn to 685 if you're not already there. So the real world link says that Kiana has a bay window in her room. The, um, did I say Kiana, Kiana or Kiana? Kiana. Let's go with Kiana. Kiana has a bay window in her room. The window seat is in the shape of a trapezoid. She needs to measure the seat in order to sew a cushion for her seat. The blue trapezoid in the diagram below represents the dimensions of the window seat. Use the diagram below to describe the relationship between trapezoids and rectangles. And so um, here they give us a picture, and remember in the last video that I told you there are a lot of different shapes of trapezoids, um, because the only defining rule of a trapezoid is that it has two sides that are parallel, and the other ones don't have to be parallel or perpendicular or any kind of angle from each other, um, just as long as these two lines are parallel and at some point they're connected by lines. All right, so um, this is another example of what a trapezoid can look like. So it says find the dimensions of each figure. Um, so I like how they remember from the first example in your um, nine point or sorry your uh, inquiry lab where we took it, both of the trapezoids and we flipped one upside down and put it right up against it and that it made the parallelograms. Well, now in this case, it's making a rectangle since we have this right angle right here. When we have it over here, it becomes a um, rectangle. So here's our rectangle and um, it's on grid paper so we're able to uh, figure out how many units each thing is. So for the trapezoid base one and remember it doesn't really matter which base you call base one and which one you call base two as long as you represent both bases and the bases are always the lines that are parallel. Okay so those are always our bases. So let's call this base one all right, and it's got one, two, three. Okay, so our, we're going to call that base one, and that's three units. And then we'll call this our base sub two, and it's one, two, three, four, five units. And then the height is, remember that we're going parallel, or sorry, perpendicular, a 90 degree angle, um, one, two, three units tall. Now the rectangle, if we're looking at, oops, sorry about that. Let me just erase with the eraser here. All right, now for the rectangle, we have um, a length of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units, and a height of one, two, three units. So it says, what is the relationship between the measurements of the rectangle and the measurements of the trapezoid? Um, so just talking it out, it looks like the um, measurements for the base of the rectangle rectangle are the big base or base sub two plus base sub one, which I also call the little base. So our big base plus our little base, base one and base two added together, that makes our base. So I would say that B1 plus B2 equals the base of the rectangle, it's an E, base of rectangle. Sorry guys, I don't have my normal stylus because it fell by the washing machine and I can't get it out now. All right, and then um, the heights are the same, okay? Either if you're talking about the trapezoid or you're talking about the rectangle, the heights are the same. All right, heights are the same. Ooh, this does not look good. There's an E there. All right, and then it says, um, how is the area of the trapezoid related to the area of the rectangle? Um, remember that we've got two of them, two trapezoids here make up this one rectangle. So if I'm looking for the area of the trapezoid, it's one half the area of the rectangle. Okay, so one half area of rectangle. I'm trying so hard to write with this and it's not working out. All right, so the area of the trapezoid, there's my picture, equals one half of the area of the rectangle. All right, so now we're looking at the key concept, which is the area of a trapezoid. In words, the area of a trapezoid is one half of the product of height and the sum of bases one and two. 
So we would add our bases 1 and 2 together, and then multiply that times h, and then divide it by 2. There's a lot going on here, okay? Um, the formula is pretty long looking, but if you can just remember that we're adding um, our bases together, multiplying times our height, and then dividing by 2, that's not quite as bad, maybe, okay? Um, but depending on what numbers we're working with, will depend on, just like with our, our parallelogram and our, our um, triangles, um, we'll determine which formula, which way we want to do the formula, because we can do this one-half times height, height sorry, times base of 1 plus base of 2, or we can do base 1 and base 2 times height, and then divide that by 2. Okay, And remember that parentheses tell me I'm going to do the adding first here, what's inside parentheses, then I'm going to multiply times height, then I'm going to divide by 2. But um, we'll talk about it. All right, so a trapezoid has two bases, B1 and B2, and the height of a trapezoid is the distance between the bases, where it comes to that 90-degree angle, that perpendicular angle. Okay, So it could be anywhere. Okay, They could show me my height anywhere as long as it goes from the base 1 to base 2. Okay. Obviously, it can't be like over here because that's not my bases, but they sometimes will do that little dots and dots this way and show you the height is here. That's fine. Oh, my doorbell's ringing. All right. It says, when finding the area of a trapezoid, it is important to follow the order of operations. In the formula, the bases are added before multiplying by one half of the height. So they're saying, like, just find one half of the height and then multiply that times the uh, some of the two bases, okay? All right, so here we go. We have find the area of the trapezoid. The bases are 5 inches and 12 inches, and the height is 7 inches. So we've got our formula, 1 half times height times b sub 1 plus b sub 2. Here's the thing. Nothing's going to come out to be easy here because there's not going to be an even number to take care of our 1 half with. But you know you can always change your 1 half to 0 0.5, Remember, that equals one-half, so that's a possibility for easier multiplying if you'd like. Um, or you're going to end up having to divide by two. It's completely up to you how you want to go about that, um, but it is an option to use 0 0.5 times everything. Okay. Now, if, there, if, one of, if either the height or these, the sum of these two numbers, um, the two bases, were evens, then I would say let's keep that as one-half, and then we can do the cross-simplifying and get rid of the half. But in this case, we're not that lucky. So we're going to have to do, um, we're going to add up our bases, which is 5 plus 12, so that's 17. We're going to do 17 times 7, and then divide that by 2. Um, or you can say, okay, what's 1 half of 7? 1 half of 7 is 3.5, and then do 3.5 times 17. You have a lot of options here. But we have to add our numbers, our bases, before we can move on. All right, so example number two says find the area of the trapezoid, and they show us that the bases are 7 and 12. So, of course, that's going to be added together to make an odd number. Boo on that. And then it's showing us that the height is 9.8 meters. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to get stuck having to do some kind of math here, okay? Um, sometimes you just can't get around it. So, if you, again, want to change this, zero, or this one half to 0 0.5, and then times that by 9.8, and then multiply that times 19, you're going to have to do some work to get there, okay? But in the end, you're going to get 93.1 after all that amazing math that you get to do. Yay for you. All right, so you're going to do examples A, B, and C. Remember, OSS, okay? I want to see the original, which is the formula. Then you're going to substitute, and then you're going to solve. All right, and, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do A with you first, so stay with me here. I like example A a lot because I see right now that my height is an even number, and I know that's going to make my world a lot easier. So let's put our formula here, 1 half of base sub 1 plus base sub 2, oops, I forgot to put height in here, times height. 1 half times height times base sub 1 plus base sub 2. 
So that's my original. Now I'm just going to substitute in. I've got 1 half times the height is 8, and then inside parentheses is 11 plus 14, my two bases. So then I've got 1 half of 8. I can very easily do 1 half of 8. That's going to be 4. And then I have to add my 11 plus 14, and so that's 25. And so now I'm just going to do 4 times 25, which is 100 centimeters squared. And guys, don't forget that this is what we're working with. We've got units squared. We're talking about area. Area is units squared. All right, so I just wanted to show you how nice and easy it was whenever you have a height that's an even number, or if you're lucky enough to add up these two numbers and they're even, then you can multiply that times the one half and get rid of that one half right away, and that's so much easier than having to multiply times 0 0.5. All right, so just wanted to put that out there. You'll be able to use that method for B, and then uh, C, you're going to have to work on that one. All right. So there you go. Go ahead and do B and C, and when you get back, I'll have the answers for you. Pause the video now. All right, and so my answers are 14.6 meters squared for B, and 0. Point, oops, let me see if I can get this to circle. 0 0.225 feet squared for C. And if you want to check my work and how I did it, you can just see what I've done here. Pause the video if you need to look at it. All right, so find the missing height. Oh, boy. So here we go. <laughs> so it says use the related formula H equals 2 times A over B sub 1 plus B sub 2. And find the height of a trapezoid. All right. So the trapezoid has an area of 108 square feet. Find the height. So it's telling us that this area is 108 feet squared, and they want us to find the height. Now they've given us this formula, 2 times the area divided by b sub 1 plus b sub 2. So we just plug in. We use this formula, and we are going to plug in the 108 for a, and then um, 12 and 15 for our b sub 1, b sub 2. And then we have to multiply 2 times 108 to get 216. And then add 12 plus 15 to get 27. And then we're able to do 216 divided by 27. And it tells us the height is 8. So 8 feet is the height of the trapezoid. All right, so it says that you can check your answer by using the formula. So if you wanted to check your answer for this, we could use the area formula, one-half times the height times B1 and B2, and we can check to see if we got it right. So um, we would do one-half of 8, which is 4, oops, times um, 12 plus 15, which is 27. So we do 4 times 27, and we get the 108 square feet, and we would check our work that way. So just an opportunity for you to check your work. All right, so you're going to do D and E. Make sure you're using the original formula, which we've got right here, to find the height. And when you come back, I'll have the answers for you. All right, and here are the answers for D and E. Now remember, guys, that um, I'm going to give you these formulas. You're not going to have to have these memorized. Um, so you're just going to have to substitute. That's where OSS really comes in. You use, you take the original formula and you substitute what you know. You know what A is, you know what B1 is, you know what B2 is, and you just work from there. Okay. Now you have to remember that you're going to have to add the denominators together before you're able to divide by it. So, um, and then we also need to multiply this before we can divide. So lots of steps to go through, but, um, it's definitely something that we can work with because we're just substituting, okay? It's like they say plug and chug, okay? Just plug and chug. All right, example number four says the shape of um, Osceola County, Florida, resembles a trapezoid. Find the approximate area of this county. And so they're telling us that our height, because, okay, here's how I know which one my height is because, listen, they could give it to us like this, okay? The height is not always just the one that goes up and down. That's not how it works. Um, 
your bases are always the two parallel lines, and then your height is the one that comes perpendicular to your base. Okay? So it just so happens that, again, they've given us the height where it's up and down, but it's not always going to be like that. So I want you to understand that the bases are the parallels, and the height is perpendicular to the bases. Really important stuff to remember, okay? All right. So um, they've given us the height is 51. Um, and if it helps, guys, you can always make your little list over here. You can say, okay, H is this. Base 1 we'll call 48. Base 2 we'll call 16. And then we're just going to take these and plug them in. So where there's H, we're going to put 51. Where it's B sub 1, we'll put 48. Where it's B sub 2, we'll put 16. And we'll plug them all in and work our way from there. Again, unfortunately, they have given us um, a height that is an odd number, so we can't easily get rid of the one half right now. But notice that when we add together our two bases, we get 64. So the first thing I'm going to do so I can get rid of that is I'm going to use my commutative property of multiplication, and I'm going to do 1 half times 64 times 51. Because I know that a half of 64 is 32, and look, I got rid of my fraction, and I don't have to deal with the decimal. Now I just have to do 32 times 51, which in my world is a lot easier than having to find um, decimals and fractions, okay? And then when you multiply that together, you get the 1,632 miles squared. All right, so that's just a tip. Um, again, we're taking our original, we're substituting, um, once we get to this point, anytime I have an even number with my bases added together or my height, I'm going to make sure that I take care of that one half right then and there. So I don't have to do with any more decimals or fractions. All right. And, um, oh, and here, this is a little mental math and it tells you that when you're multiplying with one half times 51 times 64, it would be easier to use commutative property to reorder the fra factors so that you have 1 half times 64 times 51 and take half of 64 instead of half of 51. I love it. Look at me. I'm so smart. All right, guys. That's the end of um, 9.3 area of trapezoids, and I will see you in school.